Last Word with Shahan Ramkisun. Hello and welcome to The Last Word, a show that's honest about what's really going on in our country. Coming up tonight, a special hour-long broadcast. We have a powerful interview with the Electricity Minister about government's incompetence and failure to keep the lights on. And Stuart Taylor will give a comedy review on Andre de Reiter's book. But first... One of the witnesses we've all been waiting for in the Senzo Meiwa murder trial has taken the stand. Zandi Gumede, the sister of Kelly Kumalo, Senzo's girlfriend at the time of his death, lost her bid to have all live broadcasting of her testimony barred. Live broadcast of the image of the witness, that is witness number one, will not be permitted. Two, that members of the electronic media are permitted to, to live broadcast the testimony of witness number one by means an, uh, of an audio. I might just add that uh, the prohibition um, of images of witness number one while she testifies <coughs> shall remain in place until the finalization of this case. Her reason for asking for the ban? She fears for her life. But how does that make sense? Because she's been named in court and we all know what she looks like. I mean, you can do a quick Google search, man. And as the defense advocates all pointed out, she participated in a Netflix documentary about the whole ordeal. As many wise South Africans say, it's And the legal circus continued, the disgraced, disbarred former advocate showing up in court again. Malisela Tefu just stands up, pretends he's still an advocate, and thinks he can get the judge to do his bidding. But as we all know, the judge in this case has lost his before, and Tefu just pushed him too far this time. I'm Advocate MD Tefu. I'm appearing on behalf of Sifiso Stengle Meiwa, the brother of the deceased. Mr. Tefu, Mr. there's no Sifiso Meiwa in this case. I'm appearing You're talking on behalf about a case I don't have. And please, can you and assist Mr. Tefu to get my, out of the court? My present, your Lordship. There's no Sifiso Meiwa in this case. My present, your, your Lordship, today is regarding that there is a life at stake here that I have to bring the application. Basically, the judge said, Suga Wena, you don't belong here. You're no longer actually an advocate. You can't just interrupt a court case and think that you can get away with it. You're an ordinary member of the public like the rest of us. So sit down, stay away, and stop interrupting our viewing. From one bizarre turn of events to another, we take you back, way back, back into time. Remember that song? Yeah, I'm not going to dance for you, but when the president insisted we cannot afford a nuclear build program. Remember that? Right now, because our economy is not operating at the level where we would like it to, and we've got huge financial constraints, we are not able to proceed with a, a nuclear build program. 
And uh, President Putin was quite relaxed about this. He said, you know, you deal with your issues and uh, when the situation changes, we can uh, keep talking about this. And that's where we left it. So there's no other uh, hidden agenda. Uh, we were quite straightforward. I've spoken about this uh, even in uh, Davos. I spoke about it and said, right now, we are not able to afford any nuclear build program. But fast forward to 2023, there's one man hired by the president still harping on about how nuclear is the be all and end all of all of our problems. South Africans are very allergic to nuclear. They tell us many stories that it can't be clean and uh, it should be dangerous and all those things. And we say no. Actually, we've been running Quebec for 40 years. It's a safe, reliable energy generator. It is costly at commissioning, very efficient when generating energy, and many costly in decommissioning. Actually, today, as we stand here today, the lowest cost energy in South Africa is from nuclear. We can't afford nuclear. No, nuclear is the cheapest option. What is it? And they all claim to be on the same page when it comes to fixing this electricity mess. Clearly not. This is the very reason we are in this position. The RAND keeps tumbling and there's no policy certainty on what exactly we do moving forward. And then, in true Guidian fashion, the man takes on environmentalists again. He says climate change activists hold too much power. What in the Donald Trump is happening in this country? Environmentalists veto every development if they don't like and therefore gas to power is taken to court all the time we're going to endure people can take us to court as many times as they can we will continue with gas and petroleum exploration so should we forget about climate change forget the fact that there are droughts floods fires hitting us harder than ever before just this month, the United Nations warned that 2023 to 2027 will be the hottest five-year period ever recorded. And the re impending results, well, risk to our health and food security and water management being under threat. Is Uncle Greasy in denial? Coming up, we put Electricity Minister Jose Enzo Ramachopa in the hot seat. You don't want to miss this one. Welcome back. It's safe to say South Africans are angry about load shedding. Ordinary citizens, you and I, have been subjected to blackouts for years. And businesses are struggling to keep their doors open, putting millions of jobs on the line. We have endured up to 11 hours of power cuts per day recently. That's half a day without electricity. I mean, can we really call ourselves the rainbow nation when the only color we ever see is black? due to blackouts. To be brutally honest, South Africans have one uncensored question on their minds. What the fudge is our government really doing to deal with load shedding? Because we've heard the same bull for years now. This is Straight Talk. Our guest tonight needs no introduction, and he could be South Africa's greatest hero or our biggest villain, depending on who you ask. He's the man switched on to the power crisis, well, we hope anyway, and tasked with the unenviable job of solving our electricity crisis. Is this the new dawn Cyril spoke about? Electricity Minister Jose Enzo Ramachopa. Thanks so much for joining us, Minister. Appreciate no, your time. Thank you very much, Sean, and thanks for the invite. Uh, so Minister. you were our saving grace. A couple of months ago, you were announced to take up this position, but we're still waiting to be saved. What's oh, happening? Yes, well, I didn't see myself uh, as uh, the panacea to the resolution of uh, load shedding. I think it's going to take uh, concerted action from uh, multiple players. Uh, of course, ESCOM is a is a dominant player in the energy ecosystem. We also need to 
involve business uh, in relation to a uh, new generation capacity or, and also on the demand side. Uh, industry and household must also play their role. But yes, I do accept the fact that uh, I'm the one who uh, must champion that cause. I, I do accept that uh, uh, residents are extremely angry, South Africans uh, are extremely angry, impatient, and that's uh, completely justified. I mean, as you said in your intro there, a lot of businesses have closed, and what that means is that people don't know where to get their next meal. Um, of course, uh, a, a number of uh, activities are not able to happen in the in the South African economy. I have just recently visited the automotive sector, the original equipment manufacturers, it's about seven of them that are based in the country, and they were sharing with me the inordinate amount of uh, costs that they have to incur, upfront capital costs to buy mm. generators and also your operational costs. I engaged with uh, the farmers, they were sharing with me the same thing. And, and it, it's no accident that you see that the, the, the price of food is going up, food price inflation is uh, rising exponentially and it's uh, disproportionately affecting the poor. So the anger is justified. Yeah. And I want to, I wish I could say that will end load shedding tomorrow, but unfortunately I can't. It will be extremely irresponsible and I am hope to share with you some of the actions that we, we are taking to ensure that first we we don't uh, allow load shedding to go to elevated stages. Uh, we reduce its frequency and we're able to bring it down uh, to levels that can allow at least business to find uh, its footing and then over a period of time yeah. we're able to eliminate it. We've heard that before though, right? Oh mm -hmm. yes, absolutely And that's why correct. South Africans are kind of fed up with hearing the same yes, thing. Yes, absolutely but correct. But I want to take us back to that moment when we all had some sort of hope when you were announced by the president. So take a look at that. Minister in the Presidency responsible for electricity will be Dr. Khosien Ramkhup. So there you go, right? That announcement pinned this hope for South Africans. It was something that we all thought would be um, an appointment that would lead to us actually coming up with solutions to this crisis. But right now we're hearing different things from different ministers and we don't seem to have a solution. Why is that? Well, I'm at, uh, I'm at odds with that statement because, I mean, if you come to think of it, we are not introducing a, a new action plan. So the president unveiled the energy action plan in July of uh, 2022, and it's really anchored on five pillars. The first one is to fix ESCOM, essentially improve uh, the reliability of the units and their efficiency. The second one is to galvanize private sector participation in the energy space, especially after the reforms on the generation side, we have removed the, the ceiling uh, for embedded generation, and that's why you've got a healthy and robust pipeline of projects from private sector. The third one was to accelerate the multiple bit windows uh, uh, to ensure that we are able to bring on board renewable battery storage, gas uh, to be part of the mix. And then the fourth one, the aggressive rollout of rooftop solar behind the meter allow allow uh, communities, households, and industry um, uh, to the extent that they can to self-generate. And the fifth one was uh, the three entities of uh, ESCOM, so uh, generation, transmission, and, uh, and distribution. So what we're doing ourselves is to give the uh, content uh, and if you like meaning to, to that uh, energy action plan. So what are we doing? So we said that the first intervention is to ensure that we address the, the situation that we are encountering now in winter. Why? Because uh, winter is, a, is, a, is, a, is distinct in that the um, uh, demand is uh, likely going to spike. And mm. if you look at the historic trend, uh, it suggests that it can even go up to 37,000 megawatts. But uh, on average, it's about 34,000 uh, uh, megawatts. So it means that the, the demand side is going to increase exponentially, whilst the generation side is not increasing uh, at the same rate. So it means that the gap is going to be big, and therefore the possibility of higher stages of load shedding exists. So what are we doing to address that? And I'm talking about the next 150 days and going into the future. The first one is that the, the quest to improve the energy availability factor of the 81 installed units at ESCOM um, uh, should be sustained. So we know that uh, on average the efficiency is about uh, 53% and the ESCOM approved board strategy is that it must go to 60%. I mean, just the other day, the acting CEO of ESCOM does make a point. It's a very painful point, but unfortunately, it's a reality of the situation. 
if we are to get out of this winter, not exceeding stage uh, six, keeping to stage six and stage four, I think that uh, in the context of the deteriorating uh, performance of these units, uh, we will be doing, if you like, uh, relatively well than uh, what could be the case. That's a, that's a hard ask, to ask yes, South Africans yes, to yes. try to be happy and content with no, stage no, no, six. I'm I'm no, I'm not suggesting they must be happy. So I think it's important, So I, because I don't want to denigrate the experiences of our people. You make a very valid point. People have lost jobs. Uh, uh, people's uh, normal lives is uh, disrupted. Uh, people can't get water. So I'm, I'm not trivializing that. So what is the point I'm trying to make? Uh, load shedding, it's, uh, it's miserable. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's devastating the economy, whether it's stage one, stage two. Once you get to higher stages, it's even more more alarming and devastating. So I really want to take this platform and, and thanks for being robust and really speaking on behalf of the South African people. I want to say that uh, it will be much lower than that, but it will be irresponsible for me to say that because uh, I have a full picture of where we are and the kind of actions that we are going to initiate. And Unf Unfortunately, in the next 150 days, they are unlikely going to wipe out the load shedding. But I'll give comfort to the South African people that going beyond this uh, uh, winter period, that we are likely going to see significant lower stages of load shedding. And you see the trend line suggests that we are going to go out of load shedding. And I'll be, I hope I'll be able to unpack that to you, Sean. Yeah, in 150 days, you can come back and hopefully no, no, tell no, us. No, 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 even now, I just want to unpack what happens beyond winter. I, I just want to try and unpack what you have said about yeah. us. Basically, we should be satisfied that we're at stage six this winter because things look that bad. No, no, you shouldn't be satisfied. You should be extremely impatient and angry with me. We are impatient. Me. Yes, and angry with me. But I you think seem to be content with us not no, going not above stage not six. Because I'm t I'm, I want to share with you and the South African public that the deterioration of this unit is such We have heard about the deterioration yes, of and then, and then Andre I'm de Reiter said he had increased plant maintenance at our power plants to actually ensure that we maintain our plants because it wasn't done for the past couple of years properly. Yes, but here we are. Yes, and, 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 and of course, I, I don't suggest, I mean, these are 81 units that uh, yeah. are generating. I mean, there are other issues that have to do with uh, poor planning, unfortunately. So what do I mean? There are things that... Whose fault is that? It, it's something that we are addressing with management. So the new head of generation, Peking Rumalo, seasoned, uh, prolific, is working with the station manager. So what we are doing on our part is to ensure that we are able to draw on the, the expertise that was there before. People who have uh, extensive knowledge about how these systems, uh, uh, these uh, machines operate to go and support the, uh, the general manager at a station level. I do want to underscore the point South Africans are justified to be very angry. You yeah. are justified not to believe everything I just I told you. I don't believe anything yes, you're saying, Yes, and, and to be that's honest. why I'm, I'm just... I, I, I don't believe you. By the way, I didn't expect anything, yeah. anything, uh, anything more. I mean, you are justified. So I always say to but the team... But you accepting that we are justified to be angry and upset about this does not yeah. ease anything. It doesn't. Right? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. What, what, will, what will ease this is when the lights are on uh, 24 exactly. hours a day. So let's take a and, listen and to South Africans. Okay, sure. Let's take a listen to South Africans. Uh, yeah. Why, why do we have leadership like this, people? I mean, we deserve so much more. Really, we, in 2023, with modern technology and knowing what other countries have, why do we continue to suffer like this? I mean, if we didn't have technology, we can go, okay, other countries have their problems and we know that things aren't, you know, always uh, the grass and green on, on the other side, you know, but... We have modern technology, we have the internet, we know that other countries don't sit with this shit, but yet we allow this cancerous organization and its leaders to keep this country back. I'm sorry, what is this? South Africa prepares for stage nine. No one said there would be a stage nine. Matter of fact, when they were telling us about load shedding and the stages of load shedding since 2012, no one said there was a nine. Have we not for the last decade? been put under the impression by the government that it ends at eight. Isn't stage nine just like no power forever? Like the whole day. Hi, 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 hi. Why do we have a minister of electricity? He's the minister of vibes. Surely with a minister of electricity, we don't get to nine. I swear to God, in 2024, if there's some people like, oh, I didn't vote. You're the enemy. You are the enemy immediately. 
dat in jou f***ing mensen met electricity the anger is real and yes. many South Africans think that you and your administration, the rest of the government, are useless at solving this crisis. So I do make the point that the anger is justified and in fact when I meet people on the street they do convey that to me, the level of impatience. So I also do a, a encounter people who have lost jobs. So that's perfectly justified and I think that the answer to that problem is making sure that we resolve the load chain. The ANC government has been failing on fixing load shedding since Thabo Mbeki's days because he was the first president who came out and admitted that ESCOM was right and that we needed to address the infrastructure problem at the power utility. And yet in 2023 we're talking about the same thing. You heard some South Africans saying that the ANC should not be in power come 2024. Well, ju just to make the point that uh, um, it's a democratic country, people will make their choice. So I'm not here to, to garner support for, for the party. Of course, I want people to vote for, for the ANC. But the most immediate task that is facing us is to save the South African economy. And I'm sure we want to go into that elections with the lights on, with people into employment or but reducing... But is that happening now at a rapid pace because of the elections? Because we've been talking about this for over a decade. Oh, no, you're absolutely correct. I think the ANC has taken responsibility that when uh, we've got expert advice around 2019-97 to say the current rate of uh, rollout of uh, universal access and also the point that the economy is projected to grow at an exponential rate is going to put a lot of strain on the generation capacity and if that there's no additional generation you are likely going to face a situation where generation is not sufficient to meet demand and at the time the idea was that let the private sector come into the space and that has proven not to be the case and in fact we have not invested in the in these assets uh, the installed fleet mm -hmm. at ESCOM and that's why we're experiencing it so that we have admitted and you do make the point that they will have made, the, uh, made those say uh, admissions. So you so agree that the ANC government has failed to address load shedding? I, I agree that they were responsible for getting us where we are. So I mean, it, that's not uh, that's that's not uh, that's beyond question. So is that and incompetence? Then we, are, we are we are here now to resolve the problem going into the No, but that has been field. years of incompetence. So why should South Africans give you another opportunity? Oh yes, I think if you use the lens of uh, load shedding, you are absolutely correct that we have not been able to provide sustained supply of uh, quality and reliable energy, but you can use other indices, uh, the expansion of the flow of universal access, uh, the degree to which we have been able to ensure that we protect the poor from poverty, the degree to which we have been able to improve the quality of uh, education, the degree to which we have been able to expand the uh, social services, universal universal access, the degree to which we have been able to ossify the foundation institutions that are essentially the foundations of a uh, South African democracy, a democracy that thrives. So I'm just saying you can use multiple lenses. Yeah. And if we're too narrow on this lens, yes, you are absolutely correct that over that period of time we could have done sufficiently more to resolve this problem. But I'm just saying that when you assess the performance of uh, any government, you use an aggregate picture. But, but, all but of now those that successes mean nothing because you can't provide electricity to schools, hospitals. And so many other places of business that you talk about getting people out of poverty. You're putting people back into poverty by making them lose their jobs because of low trade. So what is not in dispute is that the energy is the oxygen of any economy. Mm. So that statement is uh, absolutely correct. And that's why we are putting every effort to ensure that we address this uh, problem. Otherwise, it negates all other advances that we have made, relative advances that we have made in uh, other areas of uh, people's life. So I'm not here to essentially uh, uh, defend that mm. which can be defended. But just to say to the South African people, in the midst of uh, the crisis that is confronting them, the fact that they don't know where they are going to get their next meal, whether the lights will be on tomorrow, these are the set of actions that we are taking to ensure that first we provide some degree of relief, and then over a period of time we are able to eliminate load shedding. All right, hopefully. We're going to take yes. a short break, and Good we'll chance. continue this conversation in a moment. Stay with us.
Praveen Gordon is actually the you know person who oversees ESCOM and SOEs as yes, the public yes. enterprises yes, minister. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. why hasn't he been doing that over yeah, the past couple uh, of years? Remember, you say oversee. So oversee essentially you receive the report. You measure that against their performance uh, indicators. Of course, uh, the corporate want to say what? Why have you not delivered on this? You measure that against uh, what would have been a cabinet decision, executive decision to say that uh, this is the direction we want to take with regards to the energy path and you ask them questions relative to that and that's where it ends we go a level below mm. so we go to the station get to interrogate if you like the performance of the units what it takes for us to be able to solve this problem because this executive now the president has made a determination we can't fold our arms and then wait for this report uh, you need to be actively involved, of course, working with uh, with ESCOM so that you don't blur the lines of responsibility. And those decisions, to the extent that they require decisions of uh, those actions, rather, that to the extent that they require decisions of the executive, let them be sponsored by someone who has been on the ground and addressing this. Minister Godan has got a huge portfolio. There's DINEL there, there's SAA. You mentioned them, there's Transnet and the like. Mm. So the attention, if you like, is uh, divided. So all that he could do is just to oversee at an area level. We are on the ground working with the um, ESCOM management to ensure that collectively we resolve this problem. So this is, has ceased to be an ESCOM problem. It's a national problem. Mm. It's both um, of uh, existential proportions in terms of the economy, in terms of uh, national security. But doesn't, so, doesn't so the president need to act sooner to give you the powers? And, and if I were in your position, because like I am here in my current position, I would go to my boss and say, I need the authority to make this happen because we have a crisis. Oh, yes. And Are you not doing that? Those, that I mean, you met the president that, last week. That conversation has happened. So that conversation has happened between me and the president one-on-one. -on -one. That conversation has happened with the president and the three other ministers, myself, Minister Godan, and the Minister Mantashi. But ultimately, it's the president who will make that determination. I, I, will, I will not overstep. I mean, I won't and do that. And he's not uh, managing bruised egos here between ministers. Is that not the case? Oh, I can talk about my relationship with uh, the two individual ministers. I have an exceptionally good relationship. I mean, when we, we go to the power, power stations, I go with the team of, uh, of Minister, Minister Godan. Uh, when we come to the issues around new generation capacity, I sit with the Minister Mandashi. While you wait for your powers, do you think your salary is justified? Ministers get, what, over two million a year? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm a minister. Like I said, I mean, those are the responsibilities that they, I'm carrying out. I just shared with you the kind of exercise we have done. I shared with you uh, the, 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 the plan that we have presented to, to cabinet. So it's not like uh, without powers there is nothing uh, you can do. There's a lot that we are doing. And the point uh, I'm, I'm making that, uh, of course, some of these, uh, the results of these interventions will not be seen immediately. It's a, an accumulation of this intervention because it's only when that you are able to build uh, a significant amount of additional megawatts or saving on the additional megawatts that you begin to see the stages of load shading coming down. And, no, we continue. and do you understand that people listening to what you're saying now will say that's all lies? Because we've heard it before. Yes, but I did admit at the beginning, and I said I don't expect anything less. I'm saying that the anger, the frustration, uh, just people uh, not believing, that's justified. And I said the only way to answer them is not just talking, talking, is making sure that we reduce stages of load shedding and ultimately we have the lights on 24 hours a day. I do accept that. I don't expect anything less, by the way. You and I just had a conversation that the origins of this problem can be traced to 1997. So why are we still having load shedding? I said, no, that's a, it's a fact. I will not dispute that. But I'm telling you what are the set of actions that we are doing now. We'll be in Mozambique, I think, in two weeks' so time to, for us to be able to export the, about 1,000 megawatts me from... No, no, I'm not uh, in a position to give you that. This is the absolute... Until I present the set of package and that measures to cabinet, and I'll give you the date. And the point you are asking is very important. It's very important because when I come here next week and the other day, you, you, you should be in a position to say, but Ram yeah. Hopa, you are here. You said you'll do the following, give us so many megawatts. So it's not an aggregate conversation. And I give you the assurance and the public. Once we present that, we're going to come to present what these timelines are. I'll come, we'll announce them to the public. And then as I come to you, it's not a general conversation. You said on the 26th of June, this unit yeah. will be back so many. Is it back? 
If the answer is no, then it's a... But you're not, you you're not setting goals for yourself, and, and that's hard to allow accountability. No, the point, the point I'm making is that we have done that. And I'm saying I'm submitting it to And you've missed all those deadlines, though, previously. Your gov the government has missed those deadlines. So are you yes. worried that you shouldn't set yourself targets because you might miss it? Mm. Are you not optimistic no. about no, those things? No, you must set the targets. That's the only way you'll be measured. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to say, Ramkhopa, you're performing or underperforming, it must be against some, some tool. There's a tool that you are using. And that tool mm. must be those timelines that we set for ourselves. So what is the assurance I'm giving you and the and the viewers there at home, is that once it's approved, we'll publicize it. And then we'll come, when I come approved and have by this call. Because of course, no, it's, a, it's cabinet. I mean, it's not the Ramakopas uh, plan. It's a, cab it's a plan that the cabinet has approved. It's a plan that the ESCOM would have made the, an input. And you can admit that the, in that period, you just said it yourself. In the 70 days, the fact that we are arriving at this uh, comprehensive plan that has got the number of megawatts, the number of dates. I think f that in itself is an achievement. But what is in fact expected of us is to deliver against that plan. But so Minister, you ask, you're saying Cabinet's going to approve this plan in yes, time. Yes, when lines. we present it, yes. Bunch of useless people as far as South Africa. Uh, Why should we let no, them decide no. on a timeline from when we, for when we're going to fix load chain? Yeah, the, the assertion that is a bunch of useless people, I think uh, it's, uh, it's both uh, unfair. I don't think and, it's unfair. And I think it's, it's, it's extremely hard. I'm sorry, I mean, it's taken I mean, how many I, years? I mean, I've shared with you. Actually, other, I'm not sorry. Other, other, no, I don't say it should be so. I'm yeah. saying it's unfair from where I am. Of course, you, you'll be able to, to justify where you are. So we don't necessarily have to agree on some of these things. But I did share with you, I mean, some of the interventions that we are making in the South African economy in improving the quality of life of our people. And I do accept that we did agree that um, energy is the oxygen that gives life to any economy. So I'll take it to that yeah. team, they'll approve it, and then I'll be, as the principal driver, You we'll have already done your homework about load shedding and how it started so many years ago and what government has and hasn't done to fix it. Many people, and including the State Capture Commission, have alluded to the fact that ESCOM was looted by the Guptas. And that was allowed by former President Jacob Zuma. If there's anyone to blame for the situation we're in right now, who is it? Oh, well, I mean, the issue of corruption is uh, well documented. And, and of course, even where I am, I've got what you call the National Energy Crisis Committee, the technical team there. There's uh, multiple work stream. There's work stream number six that is dealing with crime, corruption, and safety. So it's just a laser focus on on dealing with that. So w the point I'm, I'm, I'm making is that uh, it's a function of the decisions that the, and decisions that we have not made or made over a period of time. It's an accumulation of that. And of course, uh, what the corruption did was to undermine our ability to bring a new generation capacity on board. I mean, if you go to Kutsi... I mean, there were, there were ANC members who said, you know, when Zuma left office, when he was recalled, they were saying it was probably the worst decade of our democracy under his watch. And the reason I'm asking that question is because it has come from members within the ANC. And I'm looking for somebody to actually take responsibility for that because that's what South Africans want. We want someone to be held accountable for where we are right now. Because actually, there's a cheek from ESCOM to actually increase our tariffs despite you not being able to provide electricity. So yeah. you keep taking, 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 taking from the public and then no one's held accountable. Well, I, I, I may just to go back to the point I made earlier on, that you can trace the origins of load shedding uh, from the decisions that we have made 1997 and over a period of time. And I make the point that for that we take uh, responsibility and accountability. And I'm saying that we are here and we also take responsibility to be the principal authors of the resolution of this problem. I just said to you now that we are presenting that plan the timelines, megawatts, by this time, once it's approved, we present it to the general public for them to know so that we get to be measured on that plan that we placed on the, on the table. So that when we have a conversation, it's not just an aggregate general conversation, but it's based on the plan that we have produced and place it before the South African people. So that we are able to illustrate both our intention and will to, to resolve this problem 
uh, going into into the future. So yes, I mean the, the South African people are angry, like I said, justified to be angry, despondent, uh, uh, and in fact not believing of everything that I'm saying. So that I said I accept. Yeah. I accept because the, the, the track record is checked. We have not been able to uh, meet those uh, some of the expectations, especially in the energy sector. We have not been able to achieve that. So that admission we have made, so that, that, that we have made. Because you make and an admission, it doesn't make it okay. Yes, and it that's why I'm asking for who should be held accountable for what's happened in this country. No, no, I'm talking about the energy space. And I did tell you about some of the progress that we have made in the education field, higher education, uh, free education, the issues of universal access, the issues around the, the broadening of, uh, of the social wage, the flow of uh, social wages, the extent to which we have been able to ex uh, provide uh, basic infrastructure. Can you guarantee that we will never reach stage 10 load shedding? No, I can't guarantee that we'll never be above stage 6. It's the height of 40. So I can't come to studio and, and I, I thought I wish I could do that. No, I can't come here and lie to the South African people because I can see the degree of the deterioration of, uh, of these units. I mean, just uh, the other day, not this Sunday, that Sunday, Within a period of six hours, you move from stage three hours, I'm sorry, you move from stage three to stage six. Mm. That's how unreliable these units are. So I'm not about to say to the South African people that you won't go above stage six. But I am saying to the South African people, these are the actions we are taking. The open cycle gas turbine, the issues around demand side management, also working with private sector, the aggressive rollout of solar PV, the creation of a facility to support households for us to be able to mount this gadget so that we bring down, uh, we bring down uh, if you like, uh, consumption. Yeah. The degree to which we are investing in making sure that we re improve the performance of these units. And I told you that is a procurement issue that needs to be attended to. It's a skills issue, that an experience issue that needs to be attended to. It's a money issue that is required. And Minister Godongwan has provided that fiscal relief of 254 billion, provides scope for maintenance, repurposing, and also on the grid side. And I'm saying these actions cumulatively will help us to reduce the stages of load shedding. I just shared with you the number of efforts we are making just beyond the winter. The three units at Kusile, the issues around emergency procurement, yeah. power ships, the issues around uh, uh, importing uh, um, excess generation from neighboring countries. We'll be in Mozambique having those conversations. The issues around additional generation capacity, the issues around the feed in tariff. Cumulatively, those over a period of time, eight to 12 months, will be able to help us to get out of this situation. So, you, Shan. as far as you're concerned, are doing everything possible to get things done to get us out of this mess and you would not agree with the people who say you're the minister of content creation slash influencer oh i know <laughs> <laughs> and i'm very far from that oh that those things have been mine from some time in, in history i'm generally a happy person but i'll be much much happier when we resolve load shedding all right thank you so much for your time minister Thanks, appreciate it coming up we'll laugh a little with our comedy report stay with us Welcome back, Shu. Now that I'm done telling the electricity minister how useless government is, it's time to laugh a bit. Here's Stuart Taylor. Thank you, Shahan. Listen, I think you're a bit hard on the electricity <laughs> minister over there. Think about it. That's the worst job ever. They made this guy minister of something that doesn't exist. <laughs> What's next? Minister of unicorns. <laughs> Speaking of electricity, former ESCOM CEO Andre de Reiter released his new book, Truth to Power. And if you were hoping he'd name and shame everyone involved in the energy crisis, you're out of luck. It's like he wrote a mystery novel, Andre de Reiter and the case of the missing names. Forget with great power comes great responsibility. This is more like with great power cuts comes great anonymity. <laughs> but true to our South African ways, a PDF of the book was leaked and now it's being shared far and wide on WhatsApp. 
Guys, the success of any book is based on how many books the author sells. So, like an ESCOM power station, his attempts at a best-selling book are also being sabotaged. And I've got to say, as a published author myself, I find it sickening. I find it disgusting. I find it appalling that not one of my friends sent me a copy of this PDF. In international news, it's been a roller coaster ride in the Russia, South Africa, Ukraine, America saga. First, America accusing South Africa of supplying arms to Russia. Then, South Africa saying, well, we'll set up a commission of inquiry to look into that, which is basically South African speak for, yeah, may maybe we did it, we, we don't really know what's happening. And now our president has said that he's going to be gathering a bunch of African leaders and they are going to broker a peace deal between Russia and the Ukraine. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. If there's one thing African leaders have experience in, then it's conflict. Not necessarily conflict resolution, but we definitely know conflict. I say, forget the African leaders. Get an African mom. Put her in the room with Putin and Zelensky. Give her access to her weapons of mass destruction. You know what I'm talking about. Wooden spoon, slipper, belt, and just let her loose. Putin, why are you invading countries? And you know she's going to turn to Zelensky and say, if you want to cry to the rest of the world, I will give you something to cry about. And if hidings don't work, she can drop that nuclear bomb of African mother's discipline tactics. You know the one I'm talking about. Boys, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Instant peace agreement, Shahan. <laughs> I think it'll work. It will, it yeah, will. We should send some aunties over there. Thanks so much for that, Stuart <laughs> Taylor. Coming up, we'll do a little dance. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. All right, we've heard the electricity minister say that he is hard at work trying to fix the electricity crisis. But we've heard that before from our government. Let's hope he has all the right moves because on the dance floor, he certainly does. Take a look. Yeah, that's the man who's going to fix everything, South Africa. That's the last word for tonight. You can email us your thoughts and ideas. Take care and keep smiling, South Africa. <laughs>